with the relationship between the engine power and the wheel power, according to gearing ratios. So this would be power at the engine is equal to power at the wheels. And I had put the gearing ratio over here, just make sure that uh, this particular definition is according to industrial standards. When you look for uh, gearing ratios inside transmissions and drive lines, uh, yeah, or if the gearing ratio has to be on the other side. Um, and so with the engine power related to the wheel power, uh, we can now ask the second question, which is, well, I'll, how do I connect the, how do I connect the actual power that's required with, uh, how do I connect that uh, with the, with the actual road conditions? Um, and that's done, we, uh, the basic way we do this is like this, yes. So imagine we have a car or a vehicle, could be anything. Imagine we have a vehicle that's driving up. Here, I'm going to put a nice, I'm going to put a nice, like, Ferrari like thing. There we go. Okay. So imagine I have this nice, super futuristic vehicle, and its center of mass is somewhere over here. And it's driving up an inclined at a certain angle alpha. Now the mass of the car is going to go straight down and it's going to go towards the earth. So this is M, the total mass of the vehicle times G. And let's see what other forces are there. I'm just going to refer to my little cliff notes. Oh yes, yeah. so we're going, uh, we're going to assume that we're going up. Zoop. We're going up at a certain velocity U. So there'll be a certain aerodynamic drag. There's a drag force pushing back. And um, what else did we put in? Oh, yes. And then there's friction in. There's what we call rolling friction. So I'm going to put just one, but then this is distributed over all the wheels, obviously. Um, okay. And then I'm going to add sort of a, a, a pseudo force. Fa, which is the mass of the vehicle multiplied by acceleration. So if I want to go up, uh, if I want to go up a, a, a hill, if I want to accelerate up a hill, then um, that is there, there sort of has to be leftover power for me to be able to do this. And I can take that into account by adding like a force backwards. Okay. So now we can do, uh, we can do the, let's see, we can do, we can do what? Well, we can do directly a power balance. So the amount of power required to do something. And again, this is, it's still a, a sort of a block diagram uh, idea, right? The power that's developed by the engine goes out of the engine, goes into the transmission. Some of it dissipates away in losses, goes out of the transmission to the differential, a little bit of a loss. It goes out to the wheels. There's some loss inside the wheels, and then it goes out to propel the car. And then that power has to be enough to counteract the other, like the, 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 well, it's, it has to be enough to counteract the forces that are acting on the car and give me enough for the required acceleration that I want. So this is the power and we'll uh, actually say, so all of the, so all of the losses, this is all taken into account, all the car internal losses are taken into account into the efficiency. And, um, and then I can find, so, uh, I have my, essentially my brake or my, my um, wheel power with all of the efficiencies. And uh, I can relate this to the gearing ratio. So the power at the wheels is equal to, and a power is a force multiplied by a velocity. So I'm going to have a bunch of force terms and I'm going to multiply this by the velocity uh, at which these net, this net force is operating, which is the velocity of the vehicle, U. Okay, so what are some of the force that we have? We have FR, which is the rolling friction. Rolling friction. We have, let's see, the drag force. Aerodynamic drag. 
we have acceleration. Again, this is a pseudo force. And then we have, aha, we have a component from where we can take this out. So there's one component of the weight, which is normal to the ground. And there's one component, which is going to the back. So F alpha, this is the uh, well, gravity. Okay, and we can expand these. So the power at the wheels is equal to, so the, uh, yes, the rolling friction. Well, actually these are, uh, this one is sort of, sort of straightforward. It's gonna be CR and it sort of resembles like the, the, the friction coefficient definition uh, we have for like a sliding block. So we'll have CR, which is a coefficient of rolling friction multiplied by the normal force exerted up on the vehicle which is gonna be the mass of the vehicle times G multiplied by, so if the angle is alpha for the angle of the incline, I'm gonna have an angle alpha here, and it's going to be MG, and I want this normal force, so cos, yes, cos alpha, plus, well, that's it, plus the aerodynamic drag. Well, the aerodynamic drag, is kind of, I'm gonna have a drag coefficient multiplied by one half, the ambient air density outside of the vehicle. So row A is the density corresponds to the state of the air outside. A half row, and then I'm going to have V squared, U vehicle squared. This is the, well, if I, if I would change reference frame, consider the vehicle is fixed, that would be the, the velocity of the air rushing in front of, uh, rushing towards the car. And that is the, uh, oh, we're missing one term, a half row V squared multiplied by the effective frontal area of the vehicle. A, I'm going to say A effective. Well, I'm going to, let me take out the effective. So depending on which function we use for the drag coefficient, it could I be either be a more generic function, in which case I would have to put sort of an effective frontal area that takes into account that this is not quite uh, that of the vehicle, or it could be a, a function, the drag coefficient function could be specially crafted to this particular vehicle, then I would take the actual uh, area, or this is the result of CFD. There's a different velocities for this vehicle, well, CFD or wind tunnel testing, but at different vehicle uh, velocities, I know exactly what is the drag force that is coming back and then, uh, imparting this and then uh, this whole this whole term here the cd times a would just become uh, one big function for this specific vehicle so that's our aerodynamic drag then we have the uh, acceleration which is going to be the mass of the vehicle multiplied by a the acceleration force and notice uh, this is the total mass of the vehicle because it doesn't matter that the car is on an incline. If we're accelerating it like this, then we have to take the total mass times the uh, times the acceleration. We're not we're not we're not at an angle and then accelerate. But it wouldn't wouldn't actually matter. Actually, whichever direction you take, you have you still have to accelerate the entire mass of the vehicle. So there is no cos alpha sine alpha, and then we have gravity. So we used this normal component of uh, or the the normal to the incline. For the rolling friction. Now I have this back facing component there. So plus the mass of the vehicle multiplied times G multiplied by sine alpha. All of this is multiplied by U. There we go. So some uh, references you can use, uh, for example, uh, so this particular version is in Haywood. I used the second edition, though it should be in any edition. And it's way at the beginning, I think. So in the second edition, it's around page 76. This is described. Um, now there's, there's sort of two ways. Sorry, I'm just looking at my note at the same time. Oh, yes. Um, and then uh, for, well, so there's, there's three things that need to be said. So First thing, we've already said that the uh, drag coefficient, this is highly, highly vehicle dependent. Well, 
very much vehicle dependent. And also the rolling friction, it's going to be highly, 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 uh, uh, very uh, tire dependent. So wheel size, wheel construction, how the metal is, is oriented inside of the rubber and everything. So these are very, if there's such a thing as more proprietary, but very proprietary functions. You can get good overall estimates. So the, the, the particular reference that I used is by Wong. Uh, I used the 2001. I forget if that's the, I think that is the latest, uh, the latest uh, edition. Uh, and it's called Theory of Ground Vehicles. So you can look in there to give you approximations for um, rolling friction, aerodynamic drag. Okay, so that was thing number one. Uh, thing number two is uh, look at the scale of these things. So first of all, there is a velocity term inside the aerodynamic drag. This is why your parents tell you not to drive too fast. Because, well, look at this. So if you drive at a steady speed, no, if you're not, if you're coasting, regardless which speed you're going at, so coasting is going at a constant velocity. So if you're going at a constant velocity, then A is equal to zero. A is equal to D U D T is equal to zero when coasting. Or I should, I shouldn't say coasting, but when, when driving at a constant velocity, I just want to put some room for some of the more the scribbles to come. Because uh, coasting is, is might be unpowered. Uh, so A is equal to zero when constant, when U is equal to a constant. Regardless of velocity, you can go 200 kilometers per hour. If you're not changing your velocity, uh, this term here doesn't give you anything. Um, this term there is actually of, it's kind of like, well, it's not order or uh, it's not on the order of the weight of the vehicle because you, you're never driving up a vertical wall. So it's, it's actually relatively, well, there's in most actual driving conditions, it's relatively small unless you're going up a 7% or 14% grade there if you're in San Francisco. Uh, but these hills are sort of relatively few and far between. Um, so this term is usually, well, I should say it's, it's normally reasonable, but it's also more importantly, it's independent of velocity. Same for this term. And actually they're kind of the same size, right? Well, uh, up to the constant CR. So this one is probably about a thousand times. Uh, well, cos alpha is order one and sine alpha is pretty small. So um, these may balance out, but this is also sort of reasonable size. Although this one is not independent of velocity. So the rolling coefficient, that one is dependent on velocity. But not like this, not like u squared. Uh, so for the drag coefficient, that u squared is sort of killing you at high velocity. So at, at zero velocity, when you're starting, there is no drag on the vehicle. There is there is very little aerodynamic forces, and as you increase the as you increase the the velocity, these get more and more manageable. But that u squared sort of goes out of proportion very quickly. So as you go up above 100, 120, 150 kilometers per hour, that that skyrockets, and then it it becomes very hard to beat. Uh, yes, so that was the second thing. And then the third thing is how the hell do I use this? Okay, so how am I going to use this equation here again? Let me, sorry, I'm just trying to, waiting for my pen to react. There we go. Um, eraser, so let me erase some of the scribbles again. Um, there's sort of two ways I would say there's sort of two directions to use this. Uh, so this particular equation is uh, general. It's both non-steady state, but right? if there's an acceleration, 
uh, and then you do have to care in this particular case if you're if you're accelerating or stopping uh, or or slowing down. Uh, at the very least, there'll be a, there'll be a term here that will switch sign. Um, so you can use this uh, sort of non in non steady state in in, in time dependent uh, simulations. Um, and in this particular case, it would be you would probably want to one way would probably be to turn it around, right? I would. I would, I would write it down as a is equal to du dt. The change in velocity is equal to. This would be the power at the wheels uh, divided by u, the velocity of the car. Power at the wheels divided by u minus all of the other term minus c r m vehicle blah 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 that would come in. And then in this particular case, I'm inputting the power at the wheels. So I'm giving a certain amount of, of uh, power. I'm deciding, this is where I'm pushing on the throttle. So I'm telling the engine to do something, which tells a car to do something. And then that gives me an acceleration and changes the velocity. And then I can either give more power, less power. And then if I have, uh, if I have a particular function for, uh, for example, alpha of x, space. So this would be, for example, if I go in x, this is the alpha. So this would be the, the here is zero. That means I would be on flat land and then boop, I'm going up a hill down up like this and then going up. So this is basically the, the topology that the vehicle is uh, um, running over. Oh, sorry. I, I drew alpha here. Let me, um, uh, I meant to, sorry, I got a bit mixed up there. So if instead of alpha, here I'm going, uh, driving h, the elevation. So this is actually the, this is actually the topology. And then alpha is the, is the derivative of this, right? Alpha is the, is that angle, is the slope of that curve. Then I can put that alpha of x. So then I, I probably need another equation. So dx dt is equal to u. So I can track where I am. So I start here. And then I start the vehicle. And then we go in and then I might want to accelerate and then go up and then go. And then so for some particular, uh, for some particular uh, throttle positions, basically, or, or engine uh, decisions of where, where I'm going to set the engine throttle and also the, the transmission settings, then I'm going to know how much power is delivered at the wheels. And then I can figure out what are the dynamics of the vehicle. I'm going to accelerate. Am I going to slow down? Um, and so, on. so I might have, I might want to, like, for example, when the when we're going down here, I might want to add a term which is a braking force because I might want to put the brakes and slow down, so that I don't I don't go and zoos, fly off to the moon. Let's say this turns around like that. There you go. Um, so this would be one way because I'm giving an input to the engine, and then I'm simulating the actual dynamics of the car that comes out. Okay, uh, direction number one. Direction number two is to set a requirement. So direction number two is I'll say, well, I want, I want to be able to drive on this topology of road. It's H. There you go. I'm going to pick it up and say, I want to drive on this topology of road with a given velocity profile, U. There you go. I have very high expectations. Like this. So I want this as the, the variation of velocity as I'm driving over this topology. I can put these functions in and then I can determine, well, what is the average power that I'm going to need? What is the maximum power I'm going to need? What's the, how long am I going to hover on, on this particular range? And that will tell me requirements about the engine. There's actually, uh, um, there are government uh, mandated uh, simulations at least, or, or uh, well, there are government mandated tests that I have to do following, and this is usually for a flat elevation. So instead of having elevation H is equal to a constant, or in other words, uh, the sine alpha term goes away, sine of zero is zero, and this cos alpha is equal to one. And so this is the, on a flat land, I eliminate one term, I put this equal to one. 
And then there is a, I don't get to choose. I don't get to choose my, um, my velocity profile. This one is mandated. So the government says that you have to go uh, and it looks something like you know, there's, there's a piece of this that simulates city driving. And then there's a piece that simulates highway driving. This I'm making it up as we go along, but you can actually look it up and I will put the, the resources on the course reserve. Um, there are mandated velocity profiles, it's not in terms of space, it's actually in terms of time. So there's an actual function you have to follow. And then I have to go and test, uh, uh, well, ultimately I have to test the car and then report what the emissions are and also what the fuel efficiency of the vehicle is. And so it's good to design the vehicle against this as well. So I can take this velocity function. So I know this U of T and oh, there's an acceleration term. I know this DU DT. I can differentiate this and get the acceleration, plot that in. And then I will get what is the required power at the wheels tup, 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 for this mandated uh, velocity profile. Uh, there's sort of a third way, which is actually uh, kind of the same as um, the first way that we would, well, it's kind of a mixture of the two, uh, but now I don't necessarily want, so let me just erase this. So now I don't want to follow the government mandated, um, uh, sort of mandated requirements because this, A, this is on flat ground. Um, I want to give my potential users, whoop, I want to keep the coast alpha, I want to give my potential users a certain experience. This is how, this is what they, well, this is what I'm hired for uh, as an engineer. So either I'm making a car that I want people to buy, and then I want to aim it to a certain segment of people, making it, maybe I'm designing the new Mitsubishi Lancer, and I want, you know, in front of a big 9% hill, I want to be able to step on the gas and still have that kick, you know, and, and the acceleration that drags me, even on a 9% hill, or maybe I'm designing the next Subaru Forester and I don't really want that. I just want to be able to go and I want to have a higher clearance and go camping, but on a big hill, I've got kids and I'm dealing with you know, the little uh, uh, munching poisson that the kids want to eat all the time. And I'm trying to get the car not as too dirty that I can never resell it. So if I'm on a 9% hill, I'm quite happy to go into the right-hand lane and just go put, 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 put and go up this thing and not care. So I could uh, express my requirements in terms of, uh, for example, so for a hill of alpha equals, you know, X, whatever my target is, I want to be able to go at U is equal to a certain target velocity. And that will give me, so I can put the sine alpha over here, my target velocity. Uh, if this is my, Basically, my, this is the maximum velocity I'd be able to tolerate on that hill. There will be no acceleration. This will be at steady state. Um, let's see, U, this will come in. I'm going to substitute cos alpha. And don't forget, CR is very much a function of velocity. I'm going to put this in. And then I'll say, well, for a hill of a particular angle or a particular grade, if you want your maximum velocity to be X, then your power at the wheels has to be Y. And then that will tell you how, uh, uh, what the, the, the size of your, or the, the power output of your engine has to be with respect to transmission or notwithstanding transmission gear choices that you could make. Uh, you could also check it. So once you've designed your engine, then I could go back and say, okay, do I meet this? So with this particular power, if I put in the value of alpha and I solve for what value of U is actually going to give me, uh, is actually gonna make this equation match then I will be able to figure out, you know, for a given hill alpha, or I could plot instead of just a given alpha, I could plot versus alpha, what is the uh, top speed? Actually, it probably, probably goes down. For a given alpha, what is the top speed that I could attain on a certain hill? And then I'll say, well, this is uh, highway on the freeway. I'll only be able to go up this kind of grade on a uh, country road because the velocities are usually lower. I'll be able to tolerate a grade this high and so on. 
So there are different ways, but this is the so this is the the basic relationship between <clears throat> excuse me uh, forces on your vehicle, the power of the engine as it transmits through to the power at the wheels, and its velocity. 